So we need an educational system that taps into our own knowledge systems, indigenous knowledge systems, our own wisdom, our own values, a decolonized educational system. The most powerful weapon of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And if we are not careful, the educational system in Mozambique, in Malawi, in South Africa, is simply reinforcing the colonial values. We need an education which is based on technology. Technology right now is a big equalizer. In every field, if you are studying sociology, history, psychology, if you are studying law, you must master the tools of technology, social media. Technology is now a prerequisite. So we need a technology-based education. We need to teach differently. Technology is key. Now, the issue of young people um, and culture. Culture is overrated. Ah, oh, no, how can we unite? Our cultures are different. Guess what? The borders we have are artificial. They were designed by white people in 1884 in Berlin, Berlin Conference. In Mozambique, there are people who speak Shona on this side of the border, and Shona on the other side of the border. There are Ndao people here and Ndao people here. There are more Swanas in South Africa than there in Botswana. There are more Swazi people in South Africa than in Iswani or Swaziland. So these borders are not our own. These borders are artificial. Whatever cultural differences we have, we can manage. We can negotiate. So don't worry too much about cultural differences. They can be managed and mitigated. And in any case, the borders themselves are false. Now, in terms of the AU, why we're having problems, and I think a colleague here has already identified the issue. Kwame was strong, Gaddafi was strong. These current leaders are not strong on African integration. You know why? When we succeed, when we have the United States of Africa, the one president in Africa, say from Burundi, news here will be Minister of Local Government. Cyril Ramaphosa will be Minister of Police. Munangago will be Minister of Agriculture. Kagami will be Minister of Education. Are these African leaders ready for that? <laughs> Is Nusi ready to be a minister? Is Ramaphosa ready to be a minister? Is Munagagwa ready to be a minister? Is Kagami ready to be a minister? No, 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 they are not ready. They want to be president of starving people. They want to be a president of 2.3 million people. A president of 29 million people. A president of 50 million people who are starving. Shame on you, African president. Why do we need 54 of them? 54. China has 1.3 billion people, just like us as Africans. They have one president. They're doing just fine. America, they have one president who is crazy, but they have one. <laughs> the Americans have one president. The Indians have one prime minister. So why should we as Africans have 54 men, not even women, men, <laughs> sovereignty. They love their national sovereignty. There is no such thing as a free lunch. If you are going to have the United States of Africa, if you are going to have integration, you must give up on some aspects of national sovereignty. You must give up on your delusions to be a president of starving people. Our people will do much better with one president. The per capita income, the Gini coefficient, all these numbers will be much better when we are united. But the African leader is the challenge because they want to be president. <laughs> you raised a very important point. Nigeria and South Africa are a problem. They think they are big. They are not big. When you look at India, India has 1.2 billion people. Its GDP is $2.5 trillion. China has 1.3 billion people. Their GDP is $11 trillion. 
the American GDP is $19 trillion. So South Africa with its $300 billion GDP and 50 million people is nothing in terms of globalization. Nigeria with the 190 million people and a GDP of $400 billion are nothing vis-a-vis -vis India, vis-a-vis -vis China, vis-a-vis -vis America. But they don't understand, they don't get it. It's almost like you are the biggest frog in a pond. I'm big, we're in a pond. Why don't you go into the sea? So we need to educate our brothers in Nigeria, our brothers in South Africa, that we are going to do much better together. You can't survive in South Africa under globalization. You can't survive as Nigeria under globalization. We must work together with our numbers. What are our numbers? 1.3 billion people. GDP, 2.3 trillion dollars. Can you imagine if you had to rock up and say, here I come, I'm the African. I speak on behalf of 1.3 billion people and my GDP is 2.3 trillion dollars. They will listen to you not out of love, out of economics. So, but I, 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 I understand, you know, the CFT area, the continental free trade area, South Africa only signed yesterday. Others signed in March. But South Africa was dilly darling. ah, no. How can you, a South Africa, refuse to sign the continental free trade area, which will boost Africa together? And in any case, South Africa is number last in the world. You are the worst country in the world. Worst. In terms of inequalities, I gave you the number 63.1 gene coefficient. And yet, South Africans were circumspect. Ah, we don't think this unit is good for us. But anyway, I'm happy they signed last week in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, AU. But it, which makes your point that they are not convinced that uh, they think that they're superior, they can do a lot on their own. They can't. I hope they understand and work together. And the xenophobia. How do you have Africans in South Africa attack other Africans? Uh, and you don't attack Polish, you don't attack English, you don't attack Portuguese, you attack African. Black African attacking black African. Decolonizing the mind. Apartheid colonialism taught us to hate ourselves. So when you see another black person, you hate them because you are poor. The poor in South Africa are attacking poor foreigners. That is the problem of colonialism. The poor attacking the poor. The poor blacks attacking the poor blacks. That's why we're emphasizing that we are all the same people. And we as Africans must understand that we'll never be respected until we all do well. But I, I agree with you, there's a problem of xenophobia, but we need to work on our consciousness, work on our education, improve our economics. The poor South, South Africans will not be attacking if their economy, economic circumstances were better. But it's an issue that they should be The fourth industrial revolution, you know, we, we, we need to have a conference on this. Your lives are going to be different. The way you teach, the way you learn, the way you work is going to be different. The fourth industrial revolution will change everything. So we need more time on the fourth industrial revolution. We need more time only for the Industrial Revolution because it's going to change a lot of things. Quantum computing, nanotechnology, blockchain technologies, augmented reality, human augmentation. I don't have time to define these terms. You know, this illusion that no, if we unite, maybe our minerals are going to be abused by Botswana. If we unite, maybe Malawi will eat our diamonds and our rubies. Very narrow-minded. When you come together, everyone does well. I gave you an example. Let's say on coal, we come up with a cluster, Mozambique, Botswana, Zimbabwe, South Africa, as a cluster for coal, or a cluster for diamonds. We'll be the biggest cluster in the world. We'll be able to negotiate at better prices than Botswana can do on their own. So the minerals you have in Botswana will benefit yourselves even more when we are united. There's no way you are going to lose by integration. Integration is a positive. Integration will make you benefit uh, and not lose. Self-education is more important than formal education. They won't teach you in class how to rebuild. They won't teach you in class 
how to overthrow the system. You think, <laughs> you think uh, uh, Lenin, Marx, Samora, Che Guevara, and Castro were taught revolution in the classroom? No. You have to teach yourselves how to rebel. And talk about all the people deny. Fight them. Don't ask. Take it. Samora took it. Alberto Chipane shot his way to fame. So if you are going to ask and ask, you will never get it. Be the leader, be the president, be the MP, be the mayor, be the counselor, be an entrepreneur. Don't ask, demand. Be the leader. Gender is very important. That's why I was emphasizing Marina, Josina, and we also have Luisa, who is a technocrat. We have, you know, uh, Winnie Mandela. Women, Queen Zinga. We are Nehanda in Zimbabwe. Women have been creators of history even before the whites came to Africa. In Zimbabwe, we are Nehanda. She was in charge of our struggle for independence when the whites came in the 1890s. Women have always been active. And by the way, just to dramatize, you know, yesterday they talked about human rights and so Women rights are human rights, yes, but they are more than human rights. They are smart economics. When you empower women, you are empowering society. When you empower girls, you are, it's smarter economics. There's a field that we call womenomics. It's a new word. Take note. Womenomics. The economy is driven by women. The economy is experienced by women. The economy is impacted by women. Womenomics. There's research that has been done that women are better managers than men. Women are better leaders than men. And you know, I mean, men, I, I don't like saying that, but <laughs> there's evidence. So when you empower women, when you empower girls, you're not doing them a favor. You're doing yourself a favor because your company will make more money because women are running it. Your country will perform better because the women are running it. We are emphasizing the business case, the economic case for empowering girls and women. It's not charity, it's economics. Yeah, and remember that historically, women were players, women were leaders. And it's important that as you push feminism and all these other issues, you take cognizance of the African woman who was a leader, the African woman who fought like Marina, who fought like Josina. These were soldiers. So women must feel empowered by that. And so most of the other comments were knowledge and uh, contributions. But uh, I want to emphasize on this point that you must be a player. You know, we go to Gandhi, we go to Kennedy. What does Kennedy say? Ask not, we're paraphrasing, ask not what the country can do for you, but rather what you can do for your country. Ask not what Mozambique can do for you, but rather what you can do as a young person to drive economic prosperity in Mozambique. Be the change you seek to see in Mozambique. That's Gandhi now. Become the change. Be the change. Be a player. I thank you so very much for this opportunity.